Hello, welcome to the Game and Party channel. I'm Mike Davis, and today we're taking a look at the board game The Scarlet Pimpernel. This is from Eagle Griffin Games. I'd like to say thank you to Eagle Griffin for sending us a copy of this to review. This is a game for two to six players. It plays ages 12 and up, and about 60 to 90 minutes. I'm going to show you an overview of the game, how it works, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it at the end. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this game. This is not going to be a full teach of the game. I'm just going to give you an overview of it and how it works uh, and give you my thoughts on it. So first, each person is going to get a player board and you're going to take the cubes of that matching color. And you get the number of cubes based on the number of players in the game. So in a uh, two-player game, you're getting 25 cubes all the way down to a six-player game, game, you're only getting 10 cubes there. You'll take those and set those off to the side of the board here. Uh, you'll choose a first player, give them this first player marker. You're going to shuffle up the blue cards and place them here. Vienna is going to go at the bottom. You're going to remove two from the game and discard those. Turn one over. That's going to be the starting spot for the Scarlet Pimpernel. In this case, he's going to start over here in um, Arras, A-R-R-A-S. I'm, I'm saying that correctly. And then you are going to turn over the next two cards. That's going to be the location he's going to next. In this case, he's going to, actually, he's going to go to London, is what I had set up uh, for the demo here. He's going to go to London here. And the other card under it doesn't really matter where the place is, but you need to see the, the spaces here. So he needs two of that, two of that. Those are disguises. So he needs four total. He needs three horses there, and then four of the supporters. You turn over the next two cards, and these are the two potential next places he could go. So he's either, either going to go to this location or this one. And uh, the person who puts their cube on the number five spot here is going to get to choose which card it is at the end of the round. So you have a little bit of information about where he's going next. So on your turn, what are you going to do? You're basically going to be placing cubes out on the board. And these cubes are basically your, your action markers. You're going to place these on the board in different locations. So let me show you what each one of the locations does. So the first locations I want to talk about are these building tiles here. So these building tiles are randomly placed out on the uh, hexagon locations here that are around the board. So each time you play the game, you'll get a random setup of where these are at. You must be in that region to place a cube on that building. So I have the white character here is in that region. It's their turn, they can place one on that building. Once they leave that region, they can, the cube still stays there and they can activate that building again even though they're not in that region. If you activate the building again, then instead of placing a cube on the building, you're gonna place one on the track up here that matches that location. In this case here, the horse location here, and the horse is matched up here. Now, once you have majority on one of these, which this person has majority, they have one there, no one else is there, you get to take this little guy here, and this is an extra action you can take in the game. I'll go over the actions in a moment. So that's basically the gist of the game. You're going to put in cubes down and, and on each one of your turns, and buildings is one of those places you can do that. If someone comes along and afterwards they want to put a, a building here, let's say the brown character is here in this location, and they want to put a uh, cube there, they're going to place a brown cube there, that's going to bump off the white character, but that white character's cube goes up here and helps them keep majority in that area there. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to get the Scarlet Pimpernel uh, to his next location safely here. So he is over here in Arras, and he's trying to go up here to London. Uh, one way to, to uh, one of the things you need to do to get them there is fulfill the requirements on these cards here. So we need at least four cubes in the disguise area here to get him across. We need at least three horses to help him also, and we need four of the uh, supporters here also. So uh, we place cubes out, and they go to the top here based on the buildings that you're, you're placing on. The other place you can place cubes is on these cards. And these are dealt out at the beginning of the game, so this is random. So it's got a lot of replayability in this game. I'll place a cube here on one of these supporters. I can do it on any of the cards I want in the region I'm in. I'm going to place it here on this card because at the end of the round, if this card's full, uh, I might get some points for this also. So I place a brown one here. That lets me place a brown cube up here on this supporter. I've got majority there now. I would take this now, and I have this power I can do on my turn. Another place you can place cubes on the board are on these route locations here. So in this region, the white character here could actually place a cube on that route there. If you have this power here, this is the one that lets you place two routes down at a time, you can put two down. So on her turn, she could place two cubes on that route. If the Scarlet Pimpernel uses your route, then all of those cubes will count as points at the end of that mission. One of the interesting spaces on the board you can go to and place a cube are these sleep locations here. If you place one there, you get to put a cube up here in the rest area. 
Again, if you have a majority, you get to take this power too. But the rest area, your cubes up there, you can use those later on. So in a later turn, if I place a cube out, I can take one cube from my rest area and do it twice. So basically I can say, okay, I'm gonna take this supporter here. I'm gonna take my cube off the rest area, take another supporter if I want to, or maybe use the other action here. And I get to basically take two turns in once by using a rest. So you're basically saving up cubes later to use them. And there's five other spaces over here that you can choose to go to with your cubes also. If I place my cube here, then I get to be the one to decide what cubes come off of these spots to fulfill this mission here. Now, that's an interesting decision because if you take your cubes off of there and use them to fulfill the mission spots down here, you get points for each one of your cubes that help fulfill the mission. But you also may lose majority of this character here and lose that power. So you have to decide, am I going to keep this character power or do I want to go ahead and grab some points now? This one here is kind of the same thing, but you're pulling from the supporter spot here. You pull those down. We need four supporters in this case right here. You pull four of them down. If there's others left over, you can leave them up there. Again, you can choose to leave your own cubes or someone else's. Here, you're going to take the first player marker, and you're going to get one point. And this one right here, you get to decide which route that the Scarlet Pimpernel is going to take. So if you've got a bunch of cubes on routes here, uh, you may want to take that spot so you can make sure that he takes your route so you get points. If he doesn't take your route, you don't get those cubes back, and you don't get points. And the last one here is number five. This one here, uh, if the card is completely covered in cubes, that is the card that was being used for the mission here, and this, this is the London one I showed earlier, if all six of these spots are covered uh, and you go here, you're going to get one point also. So if you're planning on putting a bunch of cubes on this card here, then you may want to go ahead and grab that spot there. You're going to get one extra point. If the uh, card is not covered, whoever puts a cube here does not get a point. If this route is not available, that person that puts a cube there does not get a point. Um, if you did not fill up enough of the supporters here, that person that puts a cube there does not get a point. And if the mission is not successful, you do not get a point here also if you're the person that puts a cube there. The round ends when either all five of these spaces have a cube on them or all the characters in the game have passed. If you pass your turn, every player passes uh, in succession, that is the end of the round. And then you see if the mission failed or succeeded. Whether you fail or succeed in the mission, you're going to flip over this number one tile here to the back side, so it's black now. And then you're going to turn over the cards like I showed earlier, and you're going to take the number two and put it on the new spot. So on a normal round, you would just take these last two cards here that you were just using, discard those. And then whoever went on the number five spot here will get to choose which one of these two cards becomes the new location. So you could put one on top of the other like this, or one on top of the other like that. Uh, the mission goals are still going to be the same, but the location will change based on what that player chooses. Then you'll turn over the next two cards, and the round continues. When you get to the final round of the game, when you're getting to round seven, uh, you'll do the same thing here. You'll discard the last two cards, but now it doesn't matter what these other two cards are. You're not going to see those. The last location is always Vienna, which is over here. So you're going to move this up. And Vienna is going to be your last location. So the last mission is a little tougher because it's three cards now combined instead of just two. And that's it, guys. That's how you play the Scarlet Pimpernel. Uh, this is a beautiful game. So let's talk about the game here. So a couple things. Component-wise, beautiful game. I love the artwork. Ian O'Toole did a great job on the artwork in this game. Uh, the little meeples and figures that they had, these are great. You All you needed was like a regular meeple, but they have like little umbrellas they're holding and stuff like that. That's cool. I love that. These are really nice. Uh, the cardboard is really thick. They're not uh, little chintzy little pieces, which is good. So component-wise, this is a beautiful, great game. Uh, I really Sitting on the table, this looks pretty to me. I really enjoyed it. Um, the variability in the game, or the replayability in the game, through the roof. <laughs> you can Every time you play this, you're going to get a different setup. Uh, these powers that I was showing earlier that you have on your, on your player's turn, these are different every time. So these come out, and you're going to get a different set. So all of the player powers up top are going to be different, the cards you deal out are going to be different, the buildings are going to be different, everything's going to be different every time you play this game. So I would say replayability through the roof. You're not going to have the same game twice in this one, uh, which is great. The uh, Alright, so now let's talk about uh, some of the, the cons of the game. Uh, I, while playing the game, you're just basically placing out these cubes. You're placing cubes every turn, place a cube, place a cube, place a cube. It got a little monotonous for me. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't having as much fun as I was hoped uh, I'd be having playing the game. I love Euro games. I like worker placement, and this is more like 
action selection slash worker placement. Uh, there is a little bit of push and pull. So if you put a cube out on like a location route and no one and that you end up not taking that route, you don't get that cube back. And you can really hose yourself over and get you can lose a lot of cubes in the game if you didn't uh, plan well. And so next round you may have half the amount of cubes that your teammates are having or your your opponents are having, and that it can be it can be hard. I also notice in the game that uh, you can tell who's in the lead. You can tell who's who's winning in the game, of course, with the score track on the outside. And so people can try to kind of beat down that character. Okay, he's in the lead. Where's he taking majority at? We got to stop that. We got to get his pieces off the board and choose other cubes besides his to get points for. Uh, and so you can kind of gang up on the on the leader uh, somewhat. If you don't do that, someone can just run away with the game and keep going. Uh, if somebody gets a bunch of cubes on one of the majority spots, like on the, the mail or the, or the wagon car or the horse over here, they get a bunch of cubes on that, you're like, uh, there's no way I'm going to get majority on that anytime soon. If they, especially if they got, say they have five cubes there. And the, at the end of the round, only two cubes are coming off. Well, there's going to have three on there. You've got to have four to beat them in the majority. And that's going to take at least four rounds, if not more, because you've got to put a cube on the building and then put a cube up top and then put another cube up top. And, and if somebody comes along and takes the building from you, now you've got to go retake the building again and then go back up top. So it can take five or six rounds to try to take a majority from somebody at the top if they've got a bunch of cubes up there. And it just doesn't feel worth it. It feels like I'm wasting my time trying to do that, uh, especially at the end of the round when the person who took the spot to choose what comes off can just take my cubes right off. And so I'm like, I'll, I've got to put a cube there first to make sure I get to choose. But now that's another turn. So I'm putting one to decide and then one to take the building and then one to put one up there. So it's three or four turns before you can really take a majority spot up top. And that just feels like a slog. This took a long time to get to where I wanted to go. And by the time I get there, it's the end of the round, someone's you know, picked the fifth space, and we're moving on. Uh, I Also, one of the things I didn't like, I didn't like there wasn't a big penalty for not succeeding on a mission. If you, we didn't succeed on the mission, then you're just not getting some points. There's a couple of people not getting points for the spots they took over here on the one through five. That's not that big a deal, missing a couple of points. There is a variant in the game where you have this little um, black character here that's coming after you, and he makes the game harder. He'll put the Scarlet Pimpernel in jail, and you've got to get him back out of there, and it makes the next mission much harder. But again, that's, it's, that's hard for everybody in the game, not just you know one person. I, what I would like to have seen is like if you're the person who causes the mission to end, like you, you take the number five spot over here or, or whatever one, the last one available, and you cause the mission to end, and we don't succeed, you get a penalty because you stopped the mission early knowing we weren't going to succeed. Now maybe it, that's a strategic thing. Now, it, it's a good thing because you didn't want the other people to get points or, or something like that, but there's no real penalty for doing that in the game, uh, at least not, not a severe enough one for me. So I would like to see a little more severe penalties. Uh, overall, uh, I would say the game's a, a decent game. If you like Euro games, you like you know cube games, you like putting uh, you know action selection, things like that, uh, great. If you like the theme, Scarlet Pimpernel theme, great. You probably will enjoy this game. Uh, the uh, I would say it, would, it took a little while to first wrap our heads around the buildings and how that worked. Um, but once we understood, you put a cube on this, and then you can use this building. You're basically activating it again to put a cube up top. That was a little confusing at first, um, but uh, the rule book gives a, a bunch of examples. So make sure you read the examples in the rule book if you're going over that. So there you go, guys. That is the Scarlet Pimpernel from Eagle Griffin Games. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, check out our podcast. And you can find us on all of our social media sites on GameAndParty.com. See you on the next video.